Okay, so the next thing that we're kind of like geared up to talk about is arrays. And I'm actually glad we have some time to talk about it today because it does take some time to kind of understand what this is. And so later on, we will be, uh, like tomorrow, I think it's like good to have like an extra review of it, like introduce it today, tomorrow, give another review. That way it makes like more sense to you guys. So arrays are basically a series of elements of the same type placed in a contiguous manner. Um, basically fancy for being like placed right next to one another. And that can be individually referenced by adding on an index to the unique identifier. So what does any of this mean? Let's look at it through an example. So for example, if I have five values of type int, right? So we said integer are just our numbers, like one, two, three, and four. So if I have five values, they can be declared as an array without having to declare five different variables. So if you guys remember, I'll write it out here. We had an integer, right? And instead of writing out like int, a okay in one line and then int b in another line and int c and so on what we can do is actually showcase all of these variables together into one contiguous array so one array that stores all of these values together basically what your array does is like store everything together and makes it so you don't have to create like multiple instances of each type of variable but instead put all your variables together. So um, this is kind of like the perfect basket, I think, I guess you could say. So like before I was talking about like how whenever you declare a variable, you always have to make space for it. So instead of making like individual pockets or individual spaces for each type of variable, what you can do is combine all of those spaces together. So you can have like one big space available for you to add in everything. So that's all basically an array does, creates that space, but combines all that space. So um, this is like a visual example of what we talk about whenever we talk about arrays. So using an array, the five and values are stored in contiguous memory locations. So one, two, four, again, this is anything as like one, two, three, four, five. All five of these can be accessed with the same identifier. So identifier in this case is foo, right? This is like our variable name. Again, super random, you can name it whatever you want. And you can point to basically each part of the array that you want to focus on. So you can either point to a one, two, four, whatever. But instead of having to create like separate variables for each space, you're creating one variable called foo that keeps all of these spaces together. So whenever you call, whenever you create, whenever you're asking for these variables, what you're going to do is focus on um, just certain places of it. So that's all an array does. Again, just saving things together into groups. So like a regular variable, an array can be declared before it is used. Um, a suitable declaration for an array is C++ is type, name, and then elements. Okay, so again, what we mean by type is either like your integers, your um, doubles, your floats, your name is any valid identifier. So again, you can determine whatever name you want it to be. Um, as long as, again, follows those rules that we talked about earlier in the week, the rules for being a valid identifier, like no keywords, no starting with a number, no random symbols like exclamation marks. And these elements fields, which is enclosed by these square brackets, specifies the length of your array in terms of the number of elements. So again, before we talked about that an array could have uh, like five elements, so that's like the example we had before. So if you want to like showcase uh, what you'd write in code terms um, for your elements, you'd be writing out type int. And like we said, our array's name was foo. So we'd say int foo brackets five. So what we just did is say that we're going to have five elements in our array, five spaces allocated in our array. And each of those spaces is going to be of value int. So they're all going to be integers, all going to be whole numbers, going to be stored in those five spaces. And instead of creating five individual instances of those um, elements, instead of creating like five uh, different variables, we're saving it all into one variable named foo. So again, this is the example that we have here. Um, so element fields within square brackets represents the number of arrays. It must be a constant expression since arrays are blocks of static memory. 
whose size must be determined at compile time before the program runs. So what I mean here is that we talked about like how our computer stores memory and that's how it is able to like store variables and refer back to our variables. But because this memory is static, that means it does not change. The size must be determined at compile time even before the program runs. So it's not flexible. We're not going to be able to change the space that we allocated after the program is run. So we have to determine like what kind of space, what kind of size you want, even before runtime. So it's determined at compile time. So this is a good note to make. Compile time happens before runtime. Compile time is when your compiler is reading whatever you wrote. Runtime is whenever you're actually outputting everything onto your screen. So by default, regular arrays of local scope are left uninitialized. So uninitialized basically means we don't provide it any uh, value. So this is just today saying like whenever you're creating an array that you're only going to be using within one method or like within one function. And again, we'll talk about functions later. But local scope just means you're not using it for all the functions that you have. You're only using it for like one specific instance. You can usually leave those uninitialized. Like you're just going to say that it has like five spaces, but we won't specify what those five, five spaces are going to be used for. This means that none of its elements are set to any particular value. Again, their contents are undetermined at the point the array is declared. Bumpy elements can also be explicitly initialized to specific values when it is declared, enclosed by curly braces. So again, like we just said, whenever we use like these brackets here, what we're doing is we're specifying that we're going to have a space, uh, like five spaces here, like allocated. That's what the brackets mean. But these curly braces basically tell us that we're going to put in values into each space. So for example, this is our array, right? Our foo array that has values of int integer type, right? So all of these numbers in here are integers. There's no doubles, there's no true or false, there's no characters or strings, all of these are whole numbers. And then within each space, we have these values that we initialized right here. So 16, 2, 77, 40, and this big crazy number. So again, you can initialize it to any value you want, but we have to specify what's going to be in each space. So that's all this declaration or initialization is telling us. Declaration would basically mean that you didn't even tell us what those values are. We're just leaving everything blank. So this would just be our declaration. This entire thing is our initialization. So this is a good point to note that the number of values between our curly braces shall never be greater, so shall not be greater than the number of elements in the actual array. So here, like you noticed, we have like five elements that we de uh, defined here. We said 16, that's one element, two, that's our second element, three, that's our third element, 40, that's our fourth element, and this big crazy number is our fifth element, right? And we have five spaces, but the moment that you add another element after here, Let's say I put another comma and I said like 99, that's wrong because we only have five spaces available. There's no way we can put that 99 anywhere. So automatically you get like a bunch of errors and your computer gets like basically really mad at you. So it's important that you remember that. You can't define more elements than you have the actual space for. But another important point to, another important point to note is that if you're declared with less, so let's say, for example, that we didn't have this 1207. We didn't define this. That's OK. So if you only defined like four elements, if you only said 16, 2, 77, and 40, if you didn't have this value over here, that's OK, because your computer automatically is just going to put a 0 here, just like a null. It means nothing for now. Eventually, you will add something there. But for now, we have extra space. So extra space is always a good thing, but no space, having no like room for it is a bad thing. Um, so the initializer can even have no values, just the braces. Again, so this counts as like an initialization function. And here we actually provided values. You don't necessarily have to. All this would do is again, create an array of five int values, each initialized with a value of zero. So we didn't give any value to it. So you can always have more space, but with those more spaces, your computer gives like a temporary value. And in this case, your temporary value is always zero. Um, yeah, so. When initialization of values is provided for an array, C++ allows the possibility of leaving the square brackets empty. So in this case, we actually did the opposite. We didn't specify how many values we're going to have. Instead, we just like wrote out what those values are. In this case, the compiler will assume automatically the size for the array. 
So again, in this case, we have like one, two, three, four, five elements that we defined here, even though we didn't write five inside of here. So we didn't specify that we made space for five things, but we did specify that we have five things. So automatically your array will be made into a size of five. And this might be helpful if like, you don't know exactly what, how much space you need. So like you can add in even more numbers. So I can add in my 99 and nothing's going to happen. There's not going to be a problem because you didn't specify what that um, space is going to be. So your array will automatically adjust. But if you do specify, if I did say that there was five, like in the example before, then we kind of block it off. We're saying we only have this five spaces and nothing else. And so you can't have that extra 99 there. And finally, the evolution of C++ has led like, to the adoption of universal initialization for arrays. So again, there are different ways that you can basically initialize your array. That's all the sentence is talking about. And since both statements are equivalent, you don't have to worry about it. If you're more comfortable with this one, go ahead, go for it. If you like this one, if you think that looks cooler or neater, go ahead, go for it. Nobody's going to stop you. It's again, just another style thing. But it's important to remember because if somebody else's code has it, you shouldn't freak out and be like, I've never seen this before in my life. It is exactly the same thing. Nothing changes. OK, so this goes into accessing values in an array. So if you think about it, this is very similar to what we did with strings. And we're going to talk about kind of the relationship between strings and arrays later on. But um, whenever we talked about indexes, remember that indexes are uh, different. I think we talk about here, too. But indexes, always in computer science, start off with a zero. So if you guys noticed in like these images here, even though we had five spaces, we always started off our explanation with a zero. And so um, here with our 16, 2, 77, and 40, and 12, 0, 71, we know that there are five elements. But when we look at the actual values, it says that the array starts off zero and ends at four. So this is, again, completely different in the way that we count from one to five. The computer counts from zero to four. And so those indices, those values, are what we're going to get from an element. So we write out what index we're referring to, either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it'll save that value into this integer. So we'll look at this again some more tomorrow. This is meant to just be a brief introduction of like what are arrays. We'll go over the same recap, but uh, this is just an important statement to note, that you can access values within your array. The next one is actually looking at the size of your array. So if, again, like how we did before, you don't know what the size of your array is. You just added in like a bunch of values. What the size of does, like the size of function, can return the total number of bytes of an array. So how much memory is being stored within it. So this is what I was talking about when especially making the connections. But I hope you guys can see this and understand that the string class that we had introduced earlier is a very powerful class that handles and manipulates the strings of characters. But because strings are, in fact, a sequence of characters, we can represent them as an array as well. So they're an array of the element type of characters, right? Because we have basically a string of characters that come together to make a word. We have an array of characters that come together to make a word. So I hope that connection makes sense. And that's why in the previous slide when we talked about indices, it's the same thing as us saying like string dot at and specifying that at this specific position, we're getting some data from it. And that's what this kind of function also does too. So here in our array, we're defining that we have a foo array that's being made of only characters. So everything within our array is a character, and it's like 20 characters in them. So this is what it looks like um, visually. This is like how we can represent it. And so this array has a capacity, again, to store sequences of up to 20 characters. But this capacity does not need to be fully exhausted. So again, we can have more space than we actually have the characters for. So in this next example, what you're going to see is that we have uh, two different types of arrays. And this is still for foo, but the characters that we put in are completely different. Here we have hello, and we still have like all this gray space available to write in more stuff. Here we have Merry Christmas, and we still have some gray space available. So by convention, the end of strings represented in character sequence is signaled by a special character called the null character, whose literal value can be written as backslash zero. So all the null does is basically tell us that our sentence ends here. So again, after hello, we have our null character, which tells us that there's nothing, no more, that's it. Same thing as here. But you should make sure that that's like, not to confuse the null character with actual spaces, because spaces specify um, that, like in computer science, a space is something. A space is still part of your string. It still has a value. While null character is literally nothing, there is nothing after that. 
even think of like your null again as like a period or the end of your sentence. So notice how after the contradiction itself, a null character has been added to indicate the end of the sequence. Again, the panels in gray represent our car elements with undetermined values. So we have nothing to fill in here. So we're representing as gray because we don't know, we could add stuff later on. We could put in more values later on, but that doesn't really matter at this point. At this point, there's just, it's just gray basically. So remembering the kind of initialization that we gave before, like how you're supposed to create your actual arrays. Um, this is what we'd be basically doing. So we have our same old, same old. Eventually, trust me, guys, we'll get tired of writing this again and again. But uh, again, this is important, the top part. So we define what our uh, array is. So instead of saying foo, I'm going to say practice array, OK? And we can define this in any way we want. So I'm going to say instead of like five spaces, I just want three spaces, OK? And I'm going to write out uh, some random numbers. So any number I want. OK? And now what I'm going to do is actually print out the result of one of these. In this case, let's try to just get the first index. See if that works. Yeah. Okay. So this is what I was talking about when we we're talking about the indices. So I was saying that we have like three spaces available to us, right? So I said that we have 42, 21, and 63. And so what we're doing now is again creating a space. So we create three spaces for us. Okay. So in box one, we created three spaces. Okay. We named these three spaces practice array. Okay. And then within each space, what we're doing is writing out the values for each. So we wrote out 42, 21, 63. And now with this print statement, what I'm asking the computer to do is like, OK, I created this array. Now tell me what's in the first part of my array. So um, the first part, again, we count from 0, 1, 2. So by me putting in 0, it goes straight to the 0th indices the zeroth index, and then it prints out 42. So that's all basically we were like discussing and talking about. And again, the importance of having like this print array instead of like int a equals 42, and then int b equals 21, and then int c equals 63. And then instead of um, writing out, okay, print a, this does the exact same thing, right? Because we still have like this group of um, integers, but we kind of have to take up space in our computer's memory and even space in our programming code for us to write this out like line by line individually. And instead of like pointing to just one variable that contains everything, we're pointing to an individual variable within like an individual program. So this is why uh, like with three variables, it might not seem as cumbersome, but you can make arrays that are like a hundred indexes in length. You can make it at like a thousand. And it does get more complicated as you guys create like more complex C++ code. So that's why arrays are really useful because it doesn't only have to be like an array of numbers. It can be an array of strings, characters, uh, true and false values. So basically combining all this together in a way that's more helpful is um, kind of like useful for programmers as a well. whole. So we'll say practice array. And again, we put zero. We run it. That's it. I can put all the other points to it. If I put one and run it, I should get 21. If I put two and run it, I should get 63. But note that if I put three and I run it, I'm going to get an error. So it says literally even what my error is. Error, uh, array index three is past the end of the array, which contains only three elements. So again, index three would actually refer to the fourth element if there was a fourth element. And like, let's assume that we actually do have one. I'm not gonna give a value to it, but if I run it and I ask for this three, it's gonna give me zero. Because even though I didn't define what the fourth element is, it still creates space for that. But um, without that space even existing in the first place, then it's gonna throw us an error. So I hope that's like, makes more sense when you guys see it uh, in terms of a code.